chapter 15, part 3. Here we're going to look at who, whom, and what questions. Questions especially with ki and k, and we'll see qua. So these are a little bit more tricky because we've got to pay attention to what's been the subject, what's been the uh, object, the indirect object, what is part of a prepositional phrase. So in general, key, when used as a question word, means who or whom, and it refers to persons only. K is, is uh, used to refer to what when we're talking about objects, not persons. Now there's going to be four main ways of forming questions. The first is with inversion. And that means you've got the subject and you're going to stick it at the end of the verb. So that means the k or the key are going to be the direct object because you've already got a subject. So in the sentence, ka to d, we've got to a as the subject and verb. You have said is the, are the, are the verb. So what did you say? The k is the what and then the a to. Uh, what did you say or what have you said? Now, notice we can do the inversion in English. Too. What have you said? And that comes out to be a word for word translation. Qui voyez vous? Here we've got inversion. The subject is vous. Voyez is you see. And so you're asking, whom do you see? So the key would be translated as, as whom there. Now you might say, who do you see? But whom do you see is more correct. Now, be careful because we can also have the question ki e la, and ki is the subject, so there's no inversion going on. Ki e la, who is there? Uh, we can't do inversion because uh, there's there's no subject. Ki is the question word, and there's a and that's that subject stays at the beginning because the question verbs generally stay at the beginning. Who is there? Now we can also use ki and k with eska or eski. Now eska, we've seen that's just the sign that uh, um, you're asking a question. Eski is pretty similar, except when the you use it when the question word is a, the subject. So if we want to ask who is there, we can say ki eski e, ki ki eski e la. So we've got ki. Then we've got ASCII, our question phrase, who, don't translate, is there. Who is there? Now we can have keskie la also. Here we've got the k, what, the eski, um, don't translate, a la. What is there? Qui est-ce qu'il voit? Qui est-ce qu'il voit? So here we've got who, ask a question. Then he sees. So this would be, whom does he see? And we, we don't translate the eska. And we use eska because we've got the subject here, il voit. The, the key is not asking who sees something. It's asking, uh, whom does he see? The key is the uh, uh, direct object there. And so that's why we translate it as whom rather than who. And here, qui est qu'il voit? So here we've got, Eski, and there's no subject, so the key is the subject. Who sees him? So, who sees him? Uh, these last two sentences are really similar. Qui est qu'il voit? Whom does he see? And qui est qu'il voit? Qui est qu'il voit? Le voit? Sorry. Qui est qu'il voit? Who sees him? But they mean very different things. Here, the key is the subject. Here, the il is the subject. Now, on these who, whom, and what questions, there are several uh, questions that are real special and very regular. Um, Keski sepas. Here we have the eski, indicating that's a question. K, um, indicating that this is a, we're asking about the subject. And sepase means to happen. So this is what is happening. What's happening? Very general question, what's happening? Now we can also do this with inversion rather than with eski. Kusapastil. So here we've got the 
Ilsa pas is an impersonal expression for it is happening. Um, so this would be, uh, um, but it's not really an impersonal. This is the inversion where we're asking what um, is happening and the il is replacing the k. What's happening? Kesku uh, say is another very general question. What plus eska and say, so what is it? And then we can make the same question, the keska, the eska, we don't translate the what, and then the is it. We can make it, we can kind of intensify it by adding the phrase kusa. Keska say kusa. So we've got the eska, which we don't translate. We've got the ku, what is it? Uh, literally, what is it that's that, or something like that. But we would translate that as, what in the world is that? So that's an intensive one. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Now, we can also use qui and que, um, or words related to them, in questions with prepositions. So for, for whom questions, where we would normally have some type of preposition, use qui with a preposition. A qui parlez-vous? To whom are you speaking? So we use the to whom. That's going to be, uh, we're asking to whom are you speaking? Vu is a subject stuck at the end of parlez. To whom are you speaking? For what questions, que changes to quoi? Because otherwise it's just too short and you wouldn't be able to pronounce things too easily. So it's a... Uh, uh, when we, we follow, uh, instead of saying de que, we say de quoi, or whatever preposition we're doing. So, de quoi parle-t-il? Of what is he uh, talking? So, what is he talking about, or about what is he talking? So, quoi means the same thing as que here, but we change it to quoi because de que wouldn't, wouldn't sound very good. De quoi parle-t-il? What is he talking about? Uh, about what is he talking. So here are some question words. Pay careful attention to everything, and when you write your answers, check them on the next video.